Ship Happens, the show where crew tell their experiences of working on cruise ships, hosted by Jimmy Crew and Jolly Roger. Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode of Ship Happens. I'm here with Jolly Roger. And I'm here with Jimmy Crew. And today, I think Jimmy, again, have a very interesting topic to talk about. What is it, Jimmy? Oh, yes. I think of the last episode, we were talking about the different terminologies of working on ships. You know, the the uh, the, the important uh, announcements that we have in case of emergencies, the, the ship layout, and the names right. that we, we learn when we come on board. But another thing that is very important for, for crew members is the language that we learn between us, because... Not many people realize this, but there are over 70 to 80 nationalities that come on board. So imagine coming on board and you have people from literally every part of the world, which was one of the most incredible things for me that I didn't know of until I worked on a ship. And I'm greeted by somebody from Zimbabwe, from India, from Philippines, from Croatia, from Russia, from every single nationality. And that actually blew my mind. So just imagine like the the type of... uh, of conversations you have with all these people, you know, which was one of the most, my favorite things uh, when I first came on board. Uh, what was it for you? Uh, 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 well, for, first of all, we need to clarify that everybody, the uh, everybody that comes on the ship from all these, and you're right, there's 70 uh, on this, on this one company that we worked on, it was like more than 70 different nationalities. So people from 70 different countries around the world are coming to the ship. Incredible. But before, before uh, uh, they join the ship, there's there's a, a certain level of English they need to, <clears throat> they need to know, so English is the official language on the ship. So <clears throat> all crew, more or less, uh, they speak English. Some <laughs> more, some less, but uh, but uh, there's there is some proficiency that needs to be established uh, with different tests before you join the ship. And this is uh, uh, linked to the previous episode when we talk about safety. And that's the main reason uh, that you you need to be able to understand emerg- in, in emergency because it's gonna it's gonna depend your life is gonna depend on your English to understand. Yeah, correct, and that's emergency. that's keeping in mind that that the biggest cruise lines in the world are here in the U.S. and we probably in the U.S. it's where they cruise the most out of anywhere in the world. So again, English of course would be the main language that's required or basic English. When yes, the guests, for the guests, the guests, majority companies. of guests of guests are speaking are English speaking mm-hmm. guests. So now, if so you yeah, go that's... to Europe, you know you have to like know German, or you know you go to Asia, you know Chinese or whatnot. So for for the majority for this company, I, I only work for for uh, in the U.S. You know, out of a home port in the U.S., so I never really had the experience of meeting more of international travelers as well, because we had about. I don't know, maybe you know better, but uh, from what I remember in the guest service, they had the numbers and it was like 80 to 90 percent of American guests. So it's yeah. definitely, you know, with the crew members, a basic knowledge of English was definitely needed. Although from uh, you, you will agree with me. We had we were uh, sailing we were together. Both of us we were in on the ship that was based from Puerto Rico. That and, is right. Uh, so, so that was that was also challenging because majority of <laughs> those guests are Spanish speaking speaking guests. Exactly. So, and, and, so... and some of them they don't don't understand English. So that was the trick. Correct. And challenge, that right? Was, that was challenging too. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> you, you and and that's the thing about like having all these nationalities on board because you know you have a lot of Latin Americans, a lot of Europeans, and we as crew members, you know, start learning. Obviously, you know the the first things I guess that everybody as as funny crew that we are, you know, was always the 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 curse words. So how do you say drink or how do you say beer? How do you say this curse word? And you start slowly building a vocabulary that only crew members know, you know. So that you talk even in, in where you're not supposed to, but in guest areas, you know, and you say like, oh, this mama gallo, and you have all these babalu, and uh, there's so many words that you just start learning. Yeah, there's, there's like code words that only we understand, and we can we can speak in front of uh, in front of the guest. And they will not understand what we're saying because this is our language. So, so tell me, are... tell me, tell me mm. one of them that 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 stuck in your head. You know that 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 you overused or that you heard the most or that was the funniest to you when you first heard it that uh, you can remember. Well, I, I I'm not I can't remember remember which one was the I used the most, 
uh, <laughs> I, I used them all. Uh, but uh, the funniest, the funniest to me was uh, cheeky cheeky, which and then oh, people use was... people use it people use it is as a, as a joke. Like if you if you uh, you like someone or you know you're flirting with oh, someone God. or like then you hook up with someone, and they will ask you, "Are oh, did you two cheeky cheeky last night?" Uh-huh. Or something like that. So, you so get that lucky. means so you yeah, get you lucky. get lucky, right? So, but yeah, that's like for... cheeky. I'm like, what? What's the cheeky cheeky? <laughs> cheeky I don't cheeky. even know from from which language did this, this came from. I I, I don't know either. Uh, I'm trying to cheeky cheeky. I mean, I, I would say it sounds Spanish, but I mean, I, it could be also American, I guess, or it one can out. be for just me, random words or something. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, it was like actually, I guess it was English, but it could also be in Spanish. But it, it was called banana. You know, banana. Oh, okay. You know, I'm thinking yeah, of fruit. Yeah. You know, because somebody said like, oh, he's gonna get banana. After what he did the other day, it was like, oh wow! Like you get a, an award, like if you if you mess up, like <laughs> you know when treat. you make a mistake. It's like, why why is he getting a fruit because of that? It's like, no, that means he's gonna get in trouble. I was like, oh banana, you know. I, I look at the banana, it's the shape, and I'm like, okay, now I get it, you know. So but do you understand first, why? Why did you make the, that connection? Like, why is he called banana? I made what? the connection once I saw the banana, you know. So like the, the, the person me. was in trouble, you know. So whenever whenever you got in trouble. That means that you're gonna get banana. That means you're gonna get screwed in the butt, you know. So yeah, but what? Oh, 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 okay, okay. Now I get it. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna get banana. I never, I and never. You know, after six years, I never even thought about like why, <laughs> why is it called banana? Really? <laughs> no, no. I thought you were joking. No, that means you're gonna get. Oh, banana F- is like a, because it's like a phallus <laughs> shape. <laughs> exactly you know it's like i don't okay. want banana anymore you know so, I mean, <laughs> well some people would love okay <laughs> yeah you would love the banana. <laughs> no wonder you were always in trouble buddy. oh god <laughs> yeah now you're provoking huh okay <laughs> so, so i mean that's what the, the, again one, one of the uh the different uh things that you learn when though the different uh language that you have from different nationalities uh what was uh, you asking me uh, Mamagayo and uh, Mamagayo was, uh, as far oh, as I understand, I remember. I think Mamagayo was a person who is uh, kind of, uh, uh, I don't know in lazy. English, lazy, right? lazy, lazy, but they like kind of taking like uh, uh, corners or There's something. Sweet time, bit. yeah, cutting yeah, corners, cutting being corners. Like, you know, just like they 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 say, you know, it's uh you know hard to find, hard again, to find, you know, a good worker, a good worker is yeah, hard yeah. to find, you know, so. <laughs> that's so the thing people yeah, don't yeah, learn yeah. how to cut <laughs> how to how to cut uh, cut corners so yeah so we call them mamagayo like if you if we if somebody finds you just sitting there not working and they're like, oh what are you doing mamagayo so that means like you you lazy uh that's uh do you know where, where that came from which language uh well it's spanish but oh yes really yeah i mean because gallo is tur- uh the turkey oh my god uh chicken or rooster okay and mama oh, really? means suck so so well well this it, sounds basically dirty. it, it would this be like cocksucker <laughs> Cock like sucker, so, okay <laughs> but I, I guess once you translate it once you translate it it's more like you know you're being lazy you're bit you're cutting corners ah oh, this mama gallo is like sleeping in the on the job or whatever right but right that's, how about that's paisano how comes. about paisano Oh, paisano. I mean, the, everybody's that's a the paisano. Word, you know? if, that word is if used If you're from the same lot. country, if you're from the same country, like, oh, yeah, he's a paisano. Yeah, that means you both share a, a similar, you know, culture or... But again, you know, a lot of people just started calling themselves paisano. Hey, my paisano, you know? So that means, you know, you're from the same country, basically. I think, that, you know? I think so that's that Italian, be, right? Yeah, I or Spanish. Paisano, paisano. Like you can, see, you, you know, use it in, mm. in most romantic languages. But yeah, I mean, it's basically. You're in the same <laughs> oh, excuse me. So, <laughs> I thought so. French is the most romantic language. <laughs> uh, but listen, let me ask you something. Since you were you were training and development, uh, mm-hmm. you must have a lot of trouble with so many nationalities and trying to teach him something that you know for oh. them you know maybe their english wasn't as proficient as other people you have no idea did you have a like, loss in translation uh, which to me was so one many of the funniest times. things as well so do, do you remember any any special uh anecdote well, not not that, not, that not, some... not lost in translation as much as they just don't understand at all <laughs> and uh, oh wow so so that was uh, that was a challenge to to explain with the ship language and then <clears throat> Uh, language barrier in, in general 
it's so so hard you have to very be very careful and then speak slowly and then keep checking yourself what you're mm -hmm. saying so and making sure and, and part of the uh, training the trainer uh, part of the, our trainings or how to become a trainer is is uh, uh, how to speak to people so they can understand you right so uh, right. the way the way you check you have to you have to ask questions so you, you cannot just look stand there and talk you have to make sure right. that they understand and it's <clears throat> it's very difficult because uh, with all these things to for people to uh, uh, understand uh, what you're saying i have this funny story it didn't happen to me but it happened one of my ships and there this was a, a uh, this should just show a language barrier. And uh, there was this one uh, uh, duo from Cuba. They were both Cubans, and they were like musicians on the ship. Uh, a, a woman, a girl, and and a gentleman. And gentleman was kind of older. I think he was like in his 60s. And his English was very poor. But musicians, they 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 can get away with this because they mm. the entertainment so they did not necessarily need a high level of english especially if they're talented musicians right. so they, of emergency, they right. yeah. yes so i remember there was a drill and this poor and he just get, got on the ship and he didn't realize and it was hard for him to understand so there's a drill it's like a fake emergency on the, on the ship where we practice and it was a fire drill and people are running around and he and he and there's this signal and he's standing in, outside of his cabin in front of his door and he's not he cannot understand what they're saying and so the one friend of mine he approached to him and he's like okay we, we need to go we need to go you know like it's emergency and he keeps saying like emergency i no okay. i don't uh, okay. i don't know and uh, you can you can tell that he doesn't understand he doesn't know what to do and then this guy goes like fire, it's fire. And then he started kind of like mimicking like a lighter fire, you know, with mm -hmm. his hand, his finger. It's like fire, it's fire. You need to go. You need to go. And this poor guy, and he looked and he's like, I'm fired. And he thought that he's getting <laughs> fired. And it was so. And this guy just lost, and he just took him by by his hand and just, just took him with him. You know, just like I cannot. Oh, I don't have God. time to explain yeah. this to you. And this poor guy, but. And, and you see he's he's scared he doesn't know what's going on so it was really challenging to to uh, because of this language barrier even though they, they have to speak english and they they become very strict with with english in later years this was like a beginning of my career on the ship that this happened mm -hmm. but that's why they they become very strict but then then all these people again we 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 get this another another language that we that we pick up and especially if most of them from Spanish, as far as I understand, all these words are coming from Spanish, Indian, Italian, and probably like Eastern European countries that, correct, that people correct. usually, usually, usually accept these words because these yeah, are the majority, the majority, majority of on, the, yeah. on nationality. Filipino especially. too, you know, you have a lot of Filipino words too. Filipino, uh, well, the, the maybe this is an interesting fact that that I can share is that on 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 most of the cruise industry. Especially in, uh, in these these big cruise lines, the big cruise in Caribbeans and USA, uh, most of the, the three biggest nations on the on those ships are from India, Philippines, and Indonesia. So these oh, are the yes, three remember, biggest yeah. biggest nations uh, that are on the ships. So like maybe like seventy percent of of the crew belonging to one of these three nations, and then the rest yes, is yes, kind of yeah. divided into usually yeah. East, Eastern Europeans. Uh, right. Italians, Latin some some America. Western, and then Amer and then Americans, and you have and Latin America, uh, Latin, Latin America, America like Colombia, Brazil, uh, Costa Rica, and Mexico. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember like, and, and again, like when I first came on board, like that was one of my biggest shocks. I went to the to the welcome, <clears throat> uh, I guess training where they welcome you on board, and the hotel director comes and introduces himself and whatnot, uh, and then they tell you like and. Uh, for example, my friends had told me, it's like, oh, you know what? Like, you know, you know, it's, it's a good experience. So I remember sitting down and I sit down and in comes like a girl from Australia and then a girl from Russia, Croatia. And I'm just like, in my mind, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I can't believe there's all these nationalities around me, you know? And, and they're like, oh, where are you from? Uh, Florida, where do you live? Like down the street. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. You know? And for me, like, no, I'm, I'm amazed that, that I'm here. You know, this is one of the best, the coolest things I've ever done. But again, so, with the loss in translation, so I mean, I, I'm sure for you as well, you have to learn 
also about other cultures as well because people come with like you have to you have to especially with some trainings uh, uh, cultural differences are very 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 uh, 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 big on on the ships very important because we we all play on the ship under one rule and uh, and different cultures and you have to respect different cultures but you also have to respect the way it works on the ship and in the country which is usa that that ship is coming from and with the guests yeah it's it's hard for some of them to adjust to the i guess the american mentality because okay some things that are oh yes that are normal here in the u.s you know it's not the same in in other countries where they're either more conservative or they're more uh, some countries are very conservative as well exactly so they come and they see see my people and they're like what in the world did i get into you know but again you know it's it's some part of a of the cultural experience that you have to like always it's just respect a, just a, as crew members as crew mm, members in particular mm. you know because we we all worked under the same uh roof so i mean it's something that we or i had to learn you know it's like oh well the you know for them you know uh, indonesia or philippines or india whatever you know you had to like sort of like learn and, and and it's always fun for me. What well, the most interesting thing was to actually learn about their cultures. And I've I've, I've already had traveled a lot before I went to cruise ships. But mm. I mean, cruise ships like made the world like into one little place, you know. So that that to me was incredible. And I was, I was you're very contained on the ship. About yeah, it. exactly. Very contained, yeah. and you ha- you have to you you like it or not, you have to adjust yourself to that's like a, a, one one of the trainings that we that we also did. It was this about this sexual harassment. As I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, that uh, and that was very difficult again to explain to people, uh, because what is insulting in one culture, it it may be completely exactly. normal in others. In some cultures, it's okay to greet each other with just a kiss on the cheeks, right? On like, the oh cheek, hey yeah. hi, and then we hug and then we kiss. You know, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy. And in some right. other country, it's you do not Ronald kiss Ronald. or even touch girl that is not your wife or your mother or, or your sister. Right, mm-hmm. it's, it's highly inappropriate. So it, this is very difficult to adjust for some for some people that are coming first first time mm-hmm. they they living their environment, and they they're kind of thrown into this 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 environment of the ship that is shocking to them. And I had I didn't have any uh, issue my, myself, but I remember that I can share a story. Uh, about a, a colleague of mine from the crew office, which is administration office, that everybody that come th- comes there, they need to mm-hmm. be processed with the passports and all these things. And there was this one per- one person, I don't want to say from which country, uh, right. uh, but uh, but th- he was very, he, he, you can tell that he was raised in a very conservative tone and environment and where uh, uh, women and men don't interact as much and they're not, they're not valued the same if, if and I he was literally that. in the place where you actually interact with the most people out of the oh yes the and then and then this this uh, mm-hmm. person that that was supposed to explain this to him and how the works and about passports and very important information then she need to share it she was a she right it was a girl woman and uh, so every time so she's talking to him and uh, there's one more person in, in that in that place with her so she's telling him Okay, you need to get there. This is your key. This is going to be your key, or this is going to be your flight ticket, and, and this and this. And he's not looking her in in her eyes, right? Because this is not this is not proper. He will not look yeah. at a, a woman's eyes. And then she's telling him, and then he's answering to her colleague, a male, right? So so they're interacting like like a threesome, right? So she's telling him, he's <laughs> asking questions. Uh, her colleague, another man there, and then she overhears it, and then she's answering to him. Like it was a very funny situation. Wow. Uh, so, so you you get people. Th- this is not often. This is very rare. But you still get these kind of people from from some cultures. And uh, I'm not. I'm not. I, I don't want to generalize. Not everybody from ev- from some country. Everybody are like that. But there's always, you know, some some level of people from different from certain countries that are raised like that. And you cannot blame them and you cannot judge them because this is their culture. Course, but yeah. again, we, in time, we, they all have have to, adjust. we all have to adjust to adjust, everybody's yes. on the same boat and we have to uh, accept and respect more than anything. You know, that's the Absolutely. main thing is respect other people's beliefs and whatever. Uh, yes. But again, ad- adhering to the, I guess, American rules, you know, since that's the majority of the guests that, that are sailing with us, you know, that, that at the time. So, oh, yes. 
and it's especially uh, but, the, with the humor. Humor is is the most tricky one uh, because of the jokes. <laughs> and there's there are funny people like yourself, and, like, us. Uh, <laughs> like us, like us. Okay, uh, and not so funny like you, <laughs> and not so funny like me. You're but, funny. Uh, you're funny. But uh, uh, there's a. It's very tricky to because jokes, even on land, right? Not everybody have the same sense of humor. And uh, it's it's it can be very um, edgy to tell tell right. the joke in in front of people, and you're always around people. And I keep, <laughs> I always keep telling these the newcomers like you you have no privacy there. Like there's always someone who can hear what you're saying. So even if of you course, and I are yeah. talking, there's like five more people next to us that, that can heard hear something us. inappropriate yeah. or whatever, you know. And that's so you have to and that's the thing you have to careful. you learn you have to learn how to. Uh, you know, some people like us, you know, have a dark humor, you know, but you can, yes. you know, have those jokes in front of somebody that's more conservative, whatever, because then they get offended and you don't want to do that, you know, because last thing Absolutely. you want to yeah. do is be in trouble with HR and, you know, and, and you disrespected somebody, you know, so you just have to like learn and you have plenty of time to learn about each other. Because like I said, you know, you're there for four to eight months, even longer, sometimes your contract. So all these people that you work with, I mean, you're basically, they evening, night, every single day together, you know, working together, yep. you finish, you yep. go to the crew bar and you have a drink. And that's when you kind of let loose and, you know, we have parties and whatnot, which is another episode. Yeah, that's going like to be another parties. topic. But, oh, but boy. I, I just don't want to, uh, uh, I, do, I don't want people to get the wrong impression that never been on a ship, like uh, with all these, with all these trainings and harassment and all these rules and regulations. No, exactly. The crew no. life is it's really wild. I mean, even though you have to be <laughs> careful about jokes, but we, the crew members, have like the darkest sense of humor, for humor like ever. I've ever met. I've ever met. <laughs> yes, and, and, right. And some of the best friends in my life I've met among yes. crew ships. You know, so we, it, it's, it's like, something it's that, that, like that I appreciate a lot. Yes. <laughs> you create you create this this special bond because you you're like twenty four seven together. So, so Absolutely. even though, even though you have to be careful about, again, cultures, but people are just very fast and, and they accept all these terms. And they and open up terms. and they open up and you finally oh, yes. can like, you know, joke freely. And, and, and it's amazing, you know, just how everybody comes together, it's no matter funny. what nationality, no matter funny, what funny, your background funny. is. And, and it's amazing, you know, the bond that you make with, with uh, many of the, the crew members from different nationalities. I'm going to share one last story, which is like lost in translation before we go to the next episode. Please, please, but please. Do. For me, this, this one blew my mind again. You have uh, the language barrier and, you know, you have people that, you know, their English is, you know, to a high level, you know, that you can communicate, you know, perfectly well yes. with them. But there's certain uh, terms that we use, I guess, in the English language or like either in the U.S. or, or that the, the native uh, language is English. Right. So right. one anecdote that was, uh, it was a guest services and there was a, a in the office, there's a back office. So you can hear everything that's happening at the front desk. So the supervisors can listen in and you know, come out in case there's, there's a problem or an issue with the guest. So this, this was, uh, I forget the, the ship, but, uh, it's docked in, I guess in Cozumel or one of those ports. So there was not, not many people on the ship. Right. So, you know, the, and you get to know the guests and people, you know, there was, you know, get to walk through the front desk and people, you know, greet them by name. So a lady came to the front desk and screaming, and there was only one guest services at the front desk and somebody else in the background, uh, training. Uh, mm. uh, supervisor who was from Canada. So the lady at the front desk, you know, uh, her English was a very good level. She was from Eastern Europe. So the lady came fracking, uh, like looking for her daughter and she was screaming and freaked out, you know, that she had lost her daughter. I can't find my daughter. Oh my God, my daughter. So the girl at the front desk had just since had seen the, uh, the, the mother and daughter before she recognized the daughter that had, you know, uh, walked through the gallery. There's a, the art gallery, right? Mm -hmm. So where they sell all the art. <clears throat> so she had just seen the daughter pass by to, to the gallery, right? So when she came back, I can't find my daughter. Oh, my God, where's my daughter? The girl at the front desk says, oh, your daughter, she passed away. Oh. And she goes, what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> my so God. before she, like, before she freaked out, the Canadian lady comes mm. out of the back office screaming like no 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 what she meant to say she passed by 
And she's like, that's what I say. She passed away. No, but you're saying when you pass away, that means you're dead. And she's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, she's she's in the art gallery. She's right there. She's like, oh, my God, thank goodness. You know, so that's one of the funniest <laughs> things that I've ever heard. And that's just one out of like hundreds that you just like. I'm sure as a guest service. I'm sure as a guest service, like like working with the guests, I didn't work with the guests as much, except for one part, where, right. uh, which would be kind of fun, which we're going to dedicate the entire episode to that. But uh, I'm <laughs> sure as a guest service, and you were working directly with guests, you have much more funny things to say and anecdotes than than me uh, just working with the crew. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, exactly. So with crew, there's one story, is... and then with the guests, oh my God, that I saw it all there, that... You just have to like, you know, cringe or just laugh about it or just <laughs> jump in, jump in to save the day. You know, like this, this Canadian lady came from the back office while the other lady was Can about to like pass out or have a, or faint, you know, and she's like, oh, she passed away. He's like, what? <laughs> My daughter? It's like, no, she passed by. She's over there by the art gallery. And I, oh my God, that's. To, to this day, it's probably my funniest uh, loss in translation story with, with a guest. You know, with crew, forget about it. I mean, I wish I would have written down more of those, you know, but that'll come back to me. We can talk about oh, it later. Oh, yes. With, with, with guests, there was uh, there was uh, the, I, I, oh, I, I, I come across guests like occasionally uh, as, uh, because I was allowed I, as a part of HR team. I was allowed at uh, on, uh, on the, in the guest area. Oh, I have this one, one funny story. If, if we have like a few more minutes before we finish too. I was yeah. walking with uh, with one of my colleagues from the training and then there was this uh, uh, there was uh, they they have this like a uh, challenge I don't know how scavenger hunt or something like one one of the the, the yes. entertaining guests uh, uh, crew entertainment department they're entertaining guests with the, during the day. Right. And uh, a scavenger and hunt, so, yes. So there's uh, some scavenger hunts and there's different games around the ship. So one of the so there's two of us and we, um, um again I have to I have to accent this we are both part of uh, HR department so we have to behave not only do we have to behave we have to control how everybody else behave and especially in the guest areas which is very strict as you know and uh, so there's this one uh, a boy like teenage boy I think he was underage maybe like 16 or 17 so he's part of this mm -hmm. scavenger hunt and and what they what they told him to to get there was a they should get the picture of proposing someone right like on the knee and with proposing asking right. them for marriage right so and then so we walking and then this underage boy came running at me and he's like excuse me excuse me can you help me i'm like yeah sure i can how can i help you and he's like oh i need this picture can you just get on your knees like they proposed to me <laughs> and i'm like sure why not <laughs> you know so there's my trainer the um, trainer colleague there like in the shock <laughs> like can i believe what's happening and there's my myself <laughs> hr on what on his knees proposing to an proposing underage kid boy <laughs> proposing a to boy. an underage boy wow <laughs> And taking a picture with that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. For everybody to wow. see. And people are laughing around and, and taking pictures. And, uh, because everybody knows it's, it's a joke. But then I go right. to I, I go to my HR on the ship. And I go, yeah, And listen, you're fired. I, before, you, before you find out from other people. I just before want to you tell you. <laughs> I just want to tell you. I just proposed, I just a proposed to a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> to a little boy. A guest in the guest area. <laughs> it was on the promenade deck. So that was one of my, my funny stories. And that I will remember <laughs> <laughs> on the on the on the ship, wow. which was very unusual. <laughs> and there's many very, again, very as you said, there's many many stories like this on the on the on the ship. And uh, we yes, will share yes. more in in the in the in the few in many episodes uh, that are coming, right? Absolutely, yeah. I guess the next one we'll we'll see what we uh we talk about. Perhaps maybe uh, roommates, you know, because like being with so many nationalities Ooh. again, some most crew members. And staff members actually have to share a cabin. You know, it's only a certain yes. few like management that have their own cabins, which is a, a huge, huge privilege and and it's amazing. But for the most part, you most of the time you have to share a cabin. So it can make or break a contract. Like literally would make your entire because like again, like I mentioned, you're there for four to no, six months. I agree to completely. Ten months. So if you have a roommate that you don't get along with. That's it. You know, your whole, your only place that you can have some peace and quiet and and your own personal space. You have somebody that you either get along with or you don't. And if you don't, 
that could be the end of your contract, which we'll we'll get into. And that, I have a few funny uh, stories about episode. those roommates also. I can so, imagine, so, especially you so that, let, that have a. Let's guys, you join us for the next episode, and uh, and we're gonna share. We're gonna talk about roommates. I love this idea, and then uh, we could we can yes. share our stories about roommates. All right. Funny ones so, and crazy yep. ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so join us for the next episode, guys, and take care. And uh, yeah, Jimmy and I, we will be here for the next one. And please, please come in and listen to us and join us to to hear more, more fun, fun stories. All right. So, yeah. All right. See you on the next episode of Ship Life. Bye. Bye. <laughs>